Welcome to my new Senate prediction for March. So let's start. And there we go. So let's start with Ohio. So Ohio, let's go. And there we go. So as many of you know, Ohio is one of the most interesting primaries and elections. So uh, you, you've heard this before. It's Mandel, Tim can uh, Dolan shouldn't be there, but in advance. But what I'm surprised about is recently uh, Mike Givens, uh, the fact that he's not here is pretty uh, dumb by Wikipedia because... If you look at the most uh, recent polls, Mike Gibbons has gotten a lot of momentum recently. And it's really between him and JD Vance for the endorsement. And I think, as of now, Mike Gibbons probably will get the Trump endorsement, which basically means you're, he's going to win the primary. So that's the big change for the Ohio Senate race. Uh, well, for the Democrats, not much has happened, but Mike Gibbons, the Mike Gibbons momentum has gotten quite big. Uh, and yeah, so here's Mike Gibbons, by the way, since Wikipedia doesn't have a picture of him. So let's go back, I think. With the current national environment, I'm really torn because it could easily be safe. The most likely nominee at the moment probably will get to a likely margin of maybe like 10 or 11 percent. And for Colorado, uh, I think Michael Bennett will do pretty okay here. It's Colorado. And uh, as of now, I'm going to have it as likely. You know, I've seen many people put it as lean, but I'm not I'm not gonna put it as lean for now. Unless Cory Gartner announces he's running. The main way as of now I would uh, put Colorado as lean in the future, I think. Cory Gartner wins here by around anywhere from six to nine percent, so so for other states, uh, let's go to let's just talk about uh, North Carolina. It's really just looking like it's going to be an easy win for the GOP in this state. I don't see Cherry Beasley doing well with the current national environment. I think whoever the nominee by the GOP is here is going to easily win here by around anywhere from five to six percent or five to seven percent in my opinion. Even though recently if we look at the polls uh, for North Carolina it's gotten a bit uh, tighter in the margins between the two Republican main nominees between uh, Pat McCrory and Ted Budd but I think as of now, I think Ted Budd will probably be the nominee, but either way, whoever the GOP nominates will win here, of course. While for Florida, this is just an easy prediction because I think Marco Rubio will will easily win here. Uh, there's really no doubt about that, unless something big like a, a scandal happens, which I doubt, but uh, who knows. Uh, I mean, the, the, on the only Democrats here that's okay is Val Demings, but even her, uh, she only, you know, narrows the race to like a likely margin, so yeah. So for the likely margin, Rubio win by round could be anywhere from 8 to 10 or even 11%. Well for Alaska, let's do this, so Alaska, as many of you know, it's a, it's one of those, one of the few ones where you're tr seeing someone try to primary. An incumbent uh, senator, which is Lisa Markowski. But I just haven't seen the momentum yet from Chewbacca. Um, there's no poll in here in Wikipedia, but I think Lisa Markowski and the voting system will favor her. Weirdly enough, we don't know what the margin will look like. It could either be a likely margin of whoever the GOP or whoever wins here who's conservative or whatever. It could also be lean. Oh, wait, yeah, sorry about that. It glitched. It could also be lean because if Shibaka gets enough momentum, she could actually, you know, do enough and get the numbers down to like 3%. But as of now, I'm just going to put it as likely for now. So let's move on to Wisconsin uh, for this update. I mean, not much has happened here recently in the Republican primary. The only thing that has happened is that. Ron Johnson will actually run for re-election. He was really, uh, he really flip-flopped for a while. And uh, it looks like it's going to be Mandela Barnes, which is an awful pick by the Democrats, in my opinion. And this is wrong, it probably should be likely or, and probably will be in the future because I just don't see Mandela Barnes doing any, remotely any well. So I think if it's Mandela Barnes, you could see Wisconsin easily easily being a likely state or a likely Senate race for the GOP anymore from 6 to even 8%. I think Manuel Barnes would just be awful for the Democrats in this state. 
And as you can see, that's it for the likely and the safe state so the GOP has 49 against the Democrats 46. So let's go to Arizona so. It's one of those races you gotta look out for, for example, for the trends especially. That's the most important part in my opinion is the statewide trends and all that sort of stuff. For the Democrat primary, we all know it's going to be Mark Kelly, while for the GOP it's between uh, Mark Vernovich and Blake Masters. I think Mark Vernovich does have the lead as of now. As you can see, he does. Uh, it's pretty... Oh wow, Jim... Almost like Jim Lemon. Jim Lemon or whatever his name is. Uh, is kind of getting close. Oh wow. What? I didn't know Blake Masters had dropped a little bit, but that's a bit surprising by the polls. But either way, I think Mar Vernovich is pretty solid candidate by the GOP in this state. Even though all those polls are a bit, a uh, bit old. But I think you know with the current national environment and the fact that the main problem for Mark Kelly is the fact that, you know, he's pretty liberal for being in a swing state like Arizona and that's probably gonna be a big problem for him. And I see the GOP winning the statewide race in the Senate, Senate election by a lean margin. I think if it's Mark Vernovich, it's going to do, and it's going to be a really easy win for the GOP here. And I just, it's mostly because of how underwater Biden and and everyone is by the Democrats, so easy win for the GOP. For the next race, let's go to Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania is one of the weirdest ones, in my opinion. There's so many things and ideologies and stuff, it's just weird. So the race for the Republican nominee is between these three, McCormick, Oz, and Sands. Uh, Oz does have the lead at the moment, while the other two are neck and neck between each other. Since Parnell withdrew from the race, the momentum went to Oz, while for the Democrats, uh, it's uh, really, I thought, uh, yeah, it's between Federman, Lamb, and yeah, let me go to the Democrat uh, uh, poll, so, and they have not updated since then, but John Federman is leading here by a mile as of now, and it's, even though it's people certain it's a toss-up, uh, John Fetterman is really... I, I mean, I've seen some people say he's a good candidate, but personally, I don't uh, see that, I think. With the current national environment, it's some like Oz or someone else from the GOP, I think. They can just easily win here, because just, just going for the main problems that many households are having, like inflation and gas prices and all that sort of stuff, and it's going to be an easy win for the GOP here, but I... And I think anywhere from 1-3%, to 3%, I, there's still a chance that it could become a tilt if Democrats nominate someone that's that's okay in my opinion. But I think the, the GOP will win here in this update. And there's a couple more races, so as you can see, the GOP already went back to the Senate with that uh, race being called, so let's go to... Uh, let's go to Nevada. Yeah, let's go to Nevada first. Nevada, so if, if you know about Nevada, the statewide Democratic Party has just uh, fallen off and just cracked by itself, you could say. The Democrat nominee is, of course, Catherine Cortez Masto, while the GOP nominee is Luxal Tai, the former Attorney General of the state. And the polls, uh, sorry about that, say it's a true, true toss-up, which I do agree it is. It's really like neck and neck race, but with the current environment nationally, with the how down bad in the polls, uh, approval wise, the Democrats and Joe Biden are, how I think, the GOP, especially mostly because of how the Democratic, uh, the socialist wing of the Democratic Party has control of the party and the state. I think the GOP will win here by a tilt margin. It could be anywhere from 0.25 to 1%. And for the two most interesting ones to look out for, in my opinion, it's New Hampshire and Georgia. As I was saying, let's go to New Hampshire, so... And in this new update, especially New Hampshire, there's been a lot of new momentum for a new candidate, so... Maggie Hassan is, of course, going to be the nominee by the Democrats, while for the Republican primary, the new momentum is not for Bulldog, oh no. It's for Chuck Morris, the president of the New Hampshire Senate. Uh, I hope there's an image of him, but if not, I'll just do that right now. And here's Chuck Morris, so the new person in the 
New Hampshire Senate race that has gotten a lot of momentum uh, since, yeah, Bulldog's not a good candidate. And after looking at Chuck Morris, I will say that he's a decent candidate. I think he is, I wouldn't outright call him an A-tier candidate. I think he's a B, B-plus candidate for the GOP. But it's mostly because of the fact that Here's the polls, by the way. Still a lot of undecided, but as I was saying, there's just no one would come close if to people like Kelly Ayotte, Scott Brown, or Chris Sununu. But if the right way is big enough for the GOP and for Chuck Morris, it is possible that the GOP could win this race, but it's really one of the closest ones in my opinion. The Democrats in this new update barely win by a tilt margin. I think in the, my last one I put it as lean, but it has dropped from lean to tilt. And yeah, so let's go for the last one, Georgia. My gut feeling is still going against uh, the GOP nominee, or the main leading one at the moment, uh, Herschel Walker. Uh, I mean, Raphael Warnock, as many of you know, is the Democrat incumbent, and the Republican primary is really important for the GOP if they want to retake the Senate. And the GOP candidates are mainly Herschel Walker, who I'm not, I don't have a good of, a good gut feeling about him. I think he could easily fall off, have like a Sean Purnell moment. And uh, as of now, like I'm still, you know, like, I'll be honest, my gut feeling would say tilt Democrats, even in this national environment. Like that's what my gut feeling would say, but Looking at the st statistics and everything, I think Herschel Walker and the GOP would barely win here by a tilt margin. And yeah, I see the GOP winning here in this new update with 53 seats against the Democrats' 47 seats. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. Stay tuned for the next video.